So, people have been inviting me on their shows. Um, and some people consider that a grave mistake. If you want to make that mistake, feel free to hit me up. Um, and, uh, we'll, we'll get something going. Um, I'm definitely down to have conversations, uh, even with those with whom I disagree. But, uh, this person, Jacob Daniel Winograd, is also going to have me on at, uh, 9.30 ET on the 6th of April. And, basically, the, the thing today was that, uh, the meme of Christ is King is going around. And so... There was a Twitter Spaces that I participated in uh, this morning, and uh, that Twitter Spaces was relatively good, um, all things considered. And uh, the the general vibe that uh, that you should come away with after this is that there are a whole lot of people saying that right now who don't actually believe it or don't believe it enough to actually live by it, don't believe it enough to actually follow Christ. Um, and for somebody who says Christ is king, you got to be very, very certain about that. You got to be very sure um, that that's what you mean, because otherwise you're taking the name in vain and a variety of other things. So um, the, the the longer discussion, which was about two hours, will be in the uh, description. I'll post a link to the spaces and you can listen to that if you want. But uh, this is just my contributions to it. I don't agree with everything that was said in the broader space, but I do agree with enough of it, and also my contributions specifically. So it's uh, time for me to post some out-of-context clips that you can uh, listen to the context of later if you want. Feel free to follow uh, Jacob at Biblical Anarchy and also um, boost the post if you want, the tweet. Uh, if you wanted to piss off Elon Musk by calling it what it is, um, it's fun. The code still says tweet. So, uh, the general gist of it is if you're going to claim that you are, uh, following Christ, if you're going to claim that Christ is your king, you better swear fealty. And if you're not interested in that, you probably shouldn't say it. Uh, so here's my contributions, uh, sort of haphazardly strewn together, um, and, also, feel free to tune in to the stream, which will be happening immediately after uh, this posts, um, because there's plenty more where this came from. This will also be available on Facebook and Odyssey. So, uh, with all that being said, uh, let's get into it. And uh, remember, the ultimate goal is to smash the fucking state. Yeah, Jeremiah, you want to go ahead and chime in? Uh, sure. So, just, like, so that, I guess, leads into something, like, you want to talk serving two masters. Um, that leads into something I wanted to respond to Kara with, and I can, guess, respond to both of your points at the same time. Um, there is a verse in Matthew, which is the, like, in my opinion, the objectively best book in the Bible. Matthew was excellent at, like, talking about actual principles, philosophy, that kind of thing. And uh, it has a whole lot of things to convict a whole lot of people in a whole lot of circles. Um, and one of the things that it has is, like, at the beginning of Matthew 7, which is arguably the best part, um, like, it talks about avoiding hypocrisy, and it talks about avoiding judgment of others um, in a way that you would also be judged. It, it, it involves, like, dealing with your own problems before judging other people. And that leads into something, because while I understand uh, the desire for public acceptance, the acceptance needs to be of the philosophy of the words of Jesus, or it's not Christianity. And so when you deal with people saying Christ is king as a meme rather than as an ardent statement of faith, you get people like, for instance, Andrew Tate. He said it. And uh, if anybody who, like, you know, knows anything about Andrew Tate um, thinks that he is <laughs> genuinely saying that, man, they've got uh, some, some, some problems in their own personal philosophy. And that ties into a later part of Matthew 7, where it's, it talks about, like, narrow is the way, 
Uh, you know, you got to walk that narrow path. And it's also talking about bewaring false prophets. And um, that's what we have to do here. Because whenever something becomes a meme, you get a lot of people who are writing along that meme um, that don't actually believe it. And in some ways, religion can become a meme um, that a lot of people will put on for aesthetic purposes or to feign superiority over other people, but they don't actually follow it. Um, and a good example of this that ties into the reason sometimes it's perceived as anti-Semitic is because there are a variety of people who, you know, like, they are often of the Catholic persuasion. They oftentimes use that as a way to say that we reject uh, the Jewish part of the faith. There's a lot of people who say that Judeo-Christianity is a contradiction in terms and that uh, acknowledging the Jewish links to uh, Christ is, you know, somehow uh, blasphemy. There's a lot of people who have a very narrow interpretation of the existing verses and scriptures, and what those people do is they taint the message. When you divorce the, like, the Jewish, like, context from Christ, you become a false prophet. And, like, that, that ties into what was discussed earlier, I think, very nicely. And there are a lot of people who do that. You'll find a lot of them on Gab, for instance. Like, there's this guy uh, who I went against the other day who's also a fake libertarian writing for, a, a, like, his own site called Liberty Plus. Um, and what that apparently means is liberty plus things that have nothing to do with liberty and are often anti-liberty, not the least of which is that this guy uh, claims Catholic imagery, the whole deus volt thing, and in the same space has, like, eugenicist and nationalist in his bio, and the first thing you'll see on his Gab profile is him praising Hitler and thanking the oven operators. Um, there's a lot of people who like, do this sort of thing, a lot of people who have this sort of mentality who are doing it because it's a way to flex, doing it because it's a way for them to get one up on people that they've already hated for a long time. They are filled with hatred. They are quick to anger. They have let the sun set on their anger so many times that that's all they have left. They are hatred, not love. And when you get, like, these people saying Christ is king, the common person's reaction to that might be, well, what do you mean when you're doing all of these other things that are completely contradictory to Christ? And a good way to put a cap on this is that, Andrew Tate, if you're going to say Christ is king, uh, you should look at the, uh, the verses in the Bible where Christ was saying that it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of the needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And the reason he was saying that was that when you become rich, especially rich by unethical means like grooming a 15-year-old girl to be the bottom hoe in your sex trafficking business, um, when you do that so that you can scam a bunch of vulnerable dudes out of their money and then later on run courses teaching people how to do this, how to satisfy the worst sinful nature of people, um, when you eventually uh, become wealthy with that wealth, um, this wealth is what's going to couch the rest of your activism, because you are an activist for wealth, not God. You are serving mammon, not Christ. And when you do so, you are creating a foundation for your statement of Christ's kingship on a foundation of the opposite. You are walking the wide path toward a narrow conclusion, and they bottleneck. They don't work. Um, and when you end up with these things, you end up with a man who would do well to follow that verse of Christ and give up all you have and follow him, because your ill-gotten wealth that was gotten through scamming, through pimping, through grooming, through being a terrible person, um, is not representative, in fact, of Christianity. And if this is going to be your new path, where you're going to, for instance, say that as a Muslim, it makes you happy to hear people boldly proclaim their Christianity, well then, you don't even act particularly Muslim. You should probably start following faiths before proclaiming them. And 
That's my point. It's not just Tate. It's many people. It's many people in many circles who are behaving like this. Yeah. Well, I would say it's 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 people taking the name of Christ in vain. Absolutely. And it's first off, it's a gun is not murder. The fact that a gun can be used for murder does not mean it's murder. It can also be used for defense. It's a gun. And I think that's the same thing with so many other things. Like, you can use the phrase Christ is king to express the love of Christ, or you can use it to express hatred in replacement of that love. And so, like, ultimately, it's the intent that matters. And it's the intent of the statement um, that, that, like, is known. And so, like, if you, if you have the intent to say that Christ is king because you want somebody to follow the, 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 the Lord toward a better life, um, then, you know, that's fine. If you want to say it because you, you know, have a, a specifically pointy hood in your closet, then it's different. You know, I think that there's a lot of people out there who have said this and have been completely fine. I'm not saying that the phrase itself is the problem. It never was. In, in the same way that, you know, a gun can be used to commit a school shooting. Um, but it's sort of like, it, it's, it's double-edged. It, it is a double-edged sword. And in doing so, in having that sword, people should use that. And they should realize that that is very specifically um, something that they need to mull over that they're making this statement in the right and proper faith, that they're not just saying it to say it, that their words aren't hollow, that they are actually speaking it with the fullness of their heart and with the intent to act as though it's true. Because if they're not, it's sort of like, you know, it's, it's, it's one of many instances where somebody is trying to use something. It's basically a right-wing virtue signal. And in doing so, in having all of the, this mentality of like, you know, we're going to own the libs. A lot of Christians um, fall short of Christ in, like, trying to, like, hold one over on their fellow person or exclude them from the conversation or have them be, like, the hated one of the weak um, or use slurs or advocate force or something like that. There are so many Christians who specifically live antithetical to the Bible um, especially the book of Matthew. And in doing so, they belie their principles and their intent in saying Christ is king, because if he was, you would not be following other masters in your actions, and you would be walking that narrow path toward him rather than separating yourself from him in your sin. By being arrogant, by being hostile, by being bigoted, by being, you know, the kind of person who drives people away from the faith and into the open arms of every other position, you know? So if you're going to say Christ is king, act like it and be humble and like, you know, <laughs> slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to anger, quick to love, you know, like be the person you're supposed to be associated with that statement or it means nothing. Well, let me, let me just say real quick, um, the Daily Wire is a grifting hack organization full of bigotry, and they will often hide that behind, if you criticize us, you're anti-Semitic because Ben Shapiro is a Jew, or something similar to that. They are very much bought into the right-wing culture uh, war uh, echo chamber mentality, and they will hide behind literally anything in order to avoid criticism. So when Candace Owens started to say things like that, um, in response to a the, the echo chamber only operating a certain way, to put it in a way, um, that uh, that caught her flack, and I was like I was all in on that because like Ben Shapiro has no business discussing anything if he's going to be like just universally taking one side by knee jerk, and he also. Um, the Daily Wire is a massively bigoted organization full of hatred, and they could use some Christian love. Um, and the the whole thing there is, Candace wanted to start st start criticizing how that place operated, and I don't even think she left. The language she uses implies that she was fired. And 
it like that tracks because that organization relies on people accepting their echo chamber and uh, that organization relies on people accepting their hatred and accepting the planks of like you know their their targeting of certain people rather than ideas their their very specific demonization of the other their divide and conquer tactics their promotion of statism um, as the means to solve these problems. And when Candace Owens started to say, maybe follow Christ instead, um, and started to quote that, that kind of, that damages Ben Shapiro's bottom line. And uh, dollar dollar bills, y'all. Cash rules everything around me. That's what is true of so many people. They have chosen to follow Mammon. It's a very profitable grift that Ben Shapiro is on. So he just says, no, it's anti-Semitism. Maybe sometimes. Not there, bucko. Nope. Right. Jeremiah, I know you had something you wanted to say, and then I want to I'll probably so I'll let you speak, and then I'll probably go in reverse order of, uh, I'll go like Alessio, Kara, Aaron, and then I'll close out. So we'll kind of try to try, try to bring it to a close here. But yeah, go ahead and, uh, we'll, you know, you can say what you want to say. So the thing is, and this is like a real concern, and I included replies in the thread uh, to this space. Uh, basically, uh, a lot of people who claim Christian nationalism are not Christians, and they are uh, nationalists. They are American nationalists or English nationalists or some other sort of like country nationalists. They are very specifically following their their nation their nation as a governmental entity. They're man made governments. And one example is Nick Fuentes, who is also on the Christ is King bandwagon. Um, and oh, yeah, for sure. Fu Fuentes is one of those people where I said it's kind of a spectrum. And oh, yeah, he, he's one of those people where I would like like I would draw a distinction between like someone like if people know who I'm talking about, like Andrew Torba and Nick Fuentes. Like, I, I don't view those people as playing the same game, even though they might use the same they, they are. label. They are. And, well, and I was going to bring I, I, up I, I, Andrew Tobit because, that. like, Gab is a den of sin. Uh, Gab is a den of the same, like, worse bigotry than is at the Daily Wire, worse anti Semitism. That's where you can find the kinds of, like, Nazis that got banned from Twitter because they were violating precious space Karen's free speech. Um, like, you can find the absolute worst people on his platform, and he specifically encourages some of the worst mentalities and behaviors with the newsletter he puts out, with the, like, book he participated in writing and spreading, and he directly, like, supports people like Nick Fuentes on a routine basis. So they are on the same mission. They're, they're fellow travelers, and they would not consider themselves anything but, um... And the reason I brought that up, uh, like, these people project a lot. Like, Andrew Tate, I, I posted a thing where he said, Christ is king, and Candace Owens liked that tweet. Like, and this is the same person who posted an image of him being crucified on a cross while smoking um, fucking, like, cigar and having shades. You know, this guy thinks he's very cool for making himself out to be Christ-like. And he's not Christ-like at all. He wants to pretend that. He wants to pretend. And people like Candace Owens are willing to help him. People like Andrew Torba are willing to help people like Nick Fuentes. And these people are all forming a gigantic, statist, nationalist sort of caucus of their own. And the general vibe, I think, that people need to remember is that there are snakes in the grass. There are wolves in sheep's clothing. There are people who, like, preach the message but don't actually hold it. And if they did, they would behave much differently than they do. Andrew Torbo being one of them, Nick Fuentes being one of them, Candace Owens being one of them, to a lesser extent. I think she's much closer to rationality and actual Christianity than many others. But, like, Andrew Tate being one of them, there's so many people I could just keep listing uh, like that are on the bandwagon and like they're they're in it for the meme they're in it to get followers they're in it to get fame they're in it to get money they're in it for themselves they're in it for their ego they're serving them and I'm not saying that that's the case with all of them it's not 
there are a huge amount of excellent Christians out there living the message, and there are a huge amount of people out there actually trying to follow Christ. But there are also a significant enough amount of the others that that's what people see when they go to the tabs where they see the trends. And that's what we have to distance from. That's what people have to distance from if they want people to accept the message. They have to live the message instead of just saying it. And they have to do that while also telling these people who are not living the message that they aren't instead of just boosting their false prophecy because that ha that is happening way too much and that's my message my message today is that like if you want the the, the real Christ is king lifestyle reread Matthew get deep in that book and realize that there's a whole lot of people out there who speak the name of Christ who do not live under his crown <laughs>